Greetings lore lovers, welcome back to Lion Drag, where we delve into the shadows and secrets of the Warhammer 40k universe. In the second part of our Fulgrim saga, we'll explore the tumultuous aftermath of the Horus heresy and witness the transformation of our tragic Primarch into a demon prince of Slaanesh. Ready your minds for a deep dive into madness and decadence as we continue to unravel the tale of the once great Fulgrim. Let's dive into the darkness. Fulgrim soon met Horus in person after the Eldaris warning. Instead of seeking an account of his actions, Horus used his immense transhuman charisma to sway Fulgrim to his cause and the service of the ruinous powers. Fulgrim's respect for Horus allowed chaos to find its way into Fulgrim's heart, destroying his loyalty to the Emperor and replacing it with a burning desire to destroy the man he now believed held humanity back from the perfection only the Chaos Gods could provide. In recognition of his trust in Fulgrim, Horus gifted him the Chaos Blade known as the Kymbrach Anatane. Only the two brothers shared the secret of the Poison Blade's true power. Blessed by Nurgle, the weapon had nearly killed Horus on Davin's Plague Moon. Fulgrim was next ordered by Horus to meet with Ferus Manus, hoping to sway his greatest friend to the side of the Horus and the Traitor Legions. Fulgrim sent the bulk of his legion at the 28th Expeditionary Fleet to meet Horus on the Isvan system while he aided the Iron Hand's 52nd Expeditionary Fleet in retaking Kalinedes IV from the Orcs. Fulgrim felt he could convince Ferus of the righteousness of Horus's cause. The meeting in Ferus's private inner sanctum of the Battle Barge Feast of Iron ended in violence as Ferus, outraged at his brother's betrayal, attacked Fulgrim. Ferus used his silvery necrodermis hands to destroy Fulgrim's power sword Fireblade, but the explosion knocked him out. Fulgrim intended to kill his brother with Forgebreaker, but was unable to despite the demon's promptings. Instead, he signaled his Phoenix Guard, who beheaded all of Ferus's Morlocks Terminators. Fulgrim fled in his assault craft, the Firebird, after ordering his flagship Pride of the Emperor to fire upon the Iron Hand's fleet, crippling them and allowing the Third Legion to flee into the warp. With their allegiance to Chaos settled, the Emperor's children's corruption spread quickly. The once laudable quest for excellence and perfection of the Third Legion became a desire for perfect hedonism and constant, self-absorbed sensual excess. The Emperor's children, from Fulgrim to the lowest Astartes, now followed the dictates of Slaanesh, abandoning their loyalty to the Emperor and embracing the ruinous pursuit of ultimate self-obsession. Before openly launching his rebellion, Horus saw an opportunity to eliminate loyalist elements within the Astartes legions under his command. The Imperial Planetary Governor of Isvan III, Varus Prahl, had been corrupted by Slaanesh, practicing forbidden sorcery. Taken by the Council of Terra to retake the planet, Horus used his mission to further his own plans. Although the Sons of Horus, World Eaters, Death Guard, and the Emperor's Children had pledged themselves to Chaos, many Loyalist elements remained within these legions. These were mostly Terran-born Space Marines who had been recruited directly by the Emperor before the Great Crusade's Primarch reunification. Horus amassed his troops in the Isvan system under the guise of putting down a rebellion. After a lengthy bombardment, Horus dispatched all known Loyalist Astartes to the planet, pretending to reclaim it for the Imperium. As Loyalist forces captured the Coral City, the planetary capital, they were betrayed by a cascade of Life Eater virus bombs from Horus' fleet. Loyalist Captain Sol Tarvitz of the Emperor's Children, a the striker cruiser Adronius, discovered the plot and, with help from Battle Captain Nathaniel Garrow of the Death Guard, warned the Loyalists on the surface of their impending doom. Those who heard the warning took shelter before the virus bombs struck. The civilian population received no such warning. 12 billion people died almost instantly as the Life Eater virus dissolved all organic matter. The psychic shockwave from their mass deaths momentarily obscured the Astronomicon. The virus bombs failed to kill all loyalists. In a rage, Angram Primar of the World Eaters led 50 companies in a frenzied ground assault. Horus, forced to adapt, reinforced Angron with troops from the Sons of Horus, Death Guard and the Emperor's Children. Loyalists, led by Captain Tarvitz, Garvin Loken and Tariq Todgaden, resisted fiercely. A contingent of Loyalists, led by Battle Captain Garo, escaped Isvan III abroad the Einstein, warning Terra of Horus's treachery. On the planet, Loyalists fought against their former comrades for three months, but lack of air support and Titan firepower doomed their cause. Despite early successes, Loyalists faced overwhelming odds. Captain Ezekiel Abaddon and Horus Eximand of the Sons of Horus 
confronted their former Mornival brothers, Loken and Torgadon. Aximan beheaded Torgadon, but Loken survived the collapse of the building he and Abaddon fought in, witnessing the final orbital bombardment that ended the Loyalist resistance. Captain Lucius of the 13th Company, driven by jealousy of Captain Tarvitz, betrayed the Loyalists, seeking favor with Lord Commander Aelodon and Fulgrim. Lucius' treachery, killing many former comrades, secured his place in the Traitor Legion. As Loyalists retreated to their last stronghold, Horus ordered a final orbital bombardment reducing the coral city to dust and ending the loyalist's desperate defense. If you are enjoying this descent into chaos, give that like button a swift blow like Fulgrim's blade cleaving through an imperial foe. Your support keeps our Lord Thirsty quest alive and helps us spread the dark gospel of Warhammer. Plus, who knows, it might even summon a bit of luck in your next tabletop game. In the final days of the Great Crusade, Bikwa Kinska, a renowned composer from Terra, accompanied the Emperor's Children 28th Expeditionary Fleet a broad Fulgrim's battle barge, Pride of the Emperor. Kinska, seeking new sensations for her music, became a target for Slanesh corruption after visiting a temple dedicated to Slanesh on the Xenos world of Leran. Inspired by her experience, she composed a symphony named Maravilla, which she performed for Fulgrim and the Emperor's children in the theater La Fenice. The Maravilla's performance was a sorcerer's ritual that opened the link between real space and the warp allowing Slaanesh's power to directly affect the audience. The cacophony unleashed by Kinska's new chaotic instruments caused disorienting and violent reactions. Mutation spread and uncontrollable emotion led to a violent orgy of hedonism and murder. During the chaos, the music summoned five lesser demons of Slaanesh, who possessed Kinska and her singers, escalating the slaughter. Some Emperor's children Astartes, taking up the corrupted instruments, discovered they could unleash destructive sonic power, becoming the first noise marines. This event marked their complete surrender to Slaanesh, and they formed the Cacophony, a new unit under First Captain Julius Caesaron. The Maravilla and its aftermath solidified the Emperor's children's devotion to Slaanesh, symbolizing their fall into hedonistic excess and the corrupting influence of chaos. When the Loyalist Salamanders, Raven Guard and Iron Hands Legion arrived in the Isvan system to confront Horus and the Traitor Legions on Isvan V, the Emperor's children eagerly joined the conflict. Thousands of drop pods and stormbirds were deployed, with Ferris Manus leading the charge alongside Vulcan and Corvus Corax. Vulcan's legions attacked the left flank, while Ferris Manus with Gabriel Santor and ten companies of Elite Moral Terminators struck the center. Corax's legion hit the right flank. The traitor faced 30,000 loyalists against their own 40,000. The battlefield was a brutal slaughterhouse, with traitor forces engaging their former brothers in a bitter conflict. Titans of the Dark Mechanicum ravaged the loyalists, who faced horrific casualties. The traitor line was buckling under the loyalist assault, but the arrival of the second wave of loyalist legion turned the tide. The Night Lords, Iron Warriors, World Bearers and Alpha Legion, secretly traitorous, arrived flesh and ready. The initial Loyalist legions, though having secured the Orgon Depression, suffered heavy losses. Ferris Manus, consumed by rage and defiance, ignored the advice of Korax and Vulcan. He led a relentless charge against the traitors, aiming for personal combat with Fulgrim. The battle expanded into one of the largest clashes of the Great Crusade, with over 60,000 Astartes fighting on Isvan V. Fulgrim, observing his brother's attack, felt a mixture of admiration and sorrow. Ferris Manus charged through traitor defenses, his terminators advancing with relentless force. Fulgrim watched, knowing their fractured brotherhood would only end in death. As Ferus and his Morlocks battled the Phoenix Guard, the air was charged with energy, each clash a fierce display of hatred and power. The Primarchs stood poised for their final confrontation, knowing only one would survive. Ferus Manus taunted Fulgrim for betraying the Emperor and siding with Horus, believing his brother mad for joining a losing cause. Fulgrim, savoring the final act of betrayal, revealed to Ferus that it was he who was naive. He pointed out a massive force gathering at the northern edge of the Urgal Depression, indicating that the Loyalists were undone. As the Iron Hands and Raven Guard regrouped, seeking aid and supplies, Horus sprung his trap. A flare shot skyward, signaling the second wave of traitor legions, Night Lords, Iron Warriors, World Bearers and Alpha Legion, who opened fire on the Loyalists, killing hundreds in moments. As the traitor forces unleashed chaos, the Warmaster's troops turned their weapons on the Iron Hands, overwhelming them. Ferus, enraged, faced Fulgrim in a fierce duel. 
The two Primarchs clashed with their iconic weapons, Fulgrim wielding a demonically possessed sword for the Lair Temple, fought with a strength fueled by chaos. Despite Ferris' valiant efforts, Fulgrim's blade cut deep and Ferris fell decapitated. As Fulgrim looked at his fallen brother, the weight of his actions and the betrayers leading to this moment hit him with full force. Overcome with grief and confusion, he struggled with the realization of his profound errors. The demon's whispers promised release from his torment, leading Fulgrim to relinquish control. The greater demon possessed Fulgrim entirely, imprisoning the Primarch's true consciousness within his own mind, symbolically represented by a painting of him in La Fenice, the theater of the Emperor's children flagship, the Pride of the Emperor. And that's a wrap of part 2 of Fulgrim's Twisted Journey Lore Lovers. If you found this chapter as fascinating as the last, don't forget to share, like and subscribe for more in-depth lore explorations. Join our Discord community to debate, discuss and delve deeper into the lore with fellow enthusiasts. Until next chapter, stay curious and may the Emperor watch over you.